Welcome to Dark Sorcery. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me Michael Heisen. How's it going, Michael? Going good. Yourself? I'm doing great. And today we are going to be studying the Bible of the Adversary by Michael W. Ford. I have my copy. Uh, Michael's got his copy. And yeah, and it's funny because uh, I just want to speak about a spiritual confirmation is that uh, both Michael and I, uh, we were doing our, our separate you know studies and taking notes for this video. And when we met up to do the video, uh, he says, well, what pages do you want to start out with? I said, ah, let's start out with page eight. They will jump to 34 and 35. He says, you know what? That's funny because go ahead and tell him. Because that when I went to get my book, those were the first two page sets of pages I went to myself. <laughs> the thing is, is that we had decided to discuss the same pages without even talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, spiritual confirmation. This uh, video has uh, an infernal blessing on it. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and turn to page eight. And it starts out with the adversarial doctrine. I'll go ahead and read half of them here. And then Michael will read the other half. So number one, uh, Lucifer represents wisdom found through self-exploration. Lucifer represents rejection of accepted truths instead of to explore possibilities. Lucifer symbolizes rebellion with a purpose, knowledge, wisdom, and power. Lucifer represents utilizing fantasy and symbolism to open the gates of hell. The underworld is the world of power. Lucifer represents balance spiritually and physically, that light and darkness are equally important to the mental and physical health of individual. And number six, Lucifer represents self-deification with earned compassion and the value of loved ones. Lilith represents the wisdom and instinctual power of both man, uh, woman and man, that the feminine is the motivator of all life. Lilith represents indulgence and freedom of spirit. Lilith represents sexual liberation and the desire to seek what you wish with responsibility and regard to the law. Lilith represents the thirst for continued existence in time, the immortality of the spirit beyond flesh. Lilith represents the darkness surrounding the light of godhood, the bearing flame of her mate, Samael. Now, what I like about uh, these points is it, it allows it tells you yeah go ahead and indulge and and you know uh, let your desires be free but also keep them in check mm -hmm. you know he says with responsibility and regard to the law so you know it, a lot of times people will just say oh you just you know do whatever you want you know but you know this book says hey you know yeah do what you want but keep it in check you know be yeah, responsible about it it's the same thing with anton zandel levay's bible you know, the satanic statements. Mm -hmm. It speaks of, you know, you have freedom to do what you want, but you've got to keep everything in check. You've got to be able to uh, follow the, the ways of the world, too. Mm -hmm. Basically, so, the law of the land. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, go ahead and turn to page 34. Okay. So second to the last paragraph, it says, uh, Luciferian will invest belief in something which brings knowledge, wisdom, and strength to his or her individual life. The Luciferian knows balance is essential, and to lose balance is to miss the point and sadly discredit the Lucif Luciferian spirit of wisdom and self-deification. So like we were talking about earlier. Um, and then when you go to page 35, the third paragraph from the bottom up, says no god or goddess should be recognized outside of the self it all must start within or you would simply be giving power away and like i tell people you know you have the power you have the ability to 
you know, to do what you visualize. Um, you don't have to depend on certain deities or certain spirits all the time. I mean, when you start out, you can um, you can have them help you along the way to develop, but you don't want to continuously depend on them. What do you think about that, Mike? I concur with that because like any parent, there comes a time when you have to cut the umbilical cord, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, you're on, and your kid is on the on their own. Yeah. You think of coming of age. What happens? Eventually, you're going to start making a um, pact of your own. You're going to be making an impact by doing the work yourself. That means getting a job, you know, whatever. If you think about it in that sense, the spirits will help you to a point but eventually they're going to sit back and watch you either succeed or fail on your own. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do everything for you. No, because they, you know, they, they believe in self-development. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. That's the one thing I like about that and working with these spirits is because they don't do that. Mm -hmm. They show you how to do it. They walk you through it. They give you pointers. They even, give you um let's call it a muse if you will mm. on how, what to turn to and where to go direction wise but you're the one that's got to literally put the work in yeah and that's the way it should be i mean because if if you don't put the work in then what is the point of being taught in the first place exactly it's a waste of time exactly mm-hmm all right, let's go to page 37. And second paragraph, it says, then upon identification of the deific mask, symbolized energy, the individual may seek spiritual ascension by utilizing a ritual practice in scroll, in sorceling belief, using inspiration to activate the primal or subconscious to actually inducing change and progression in the self. This will later manifest itself in a spiritual experience, which can align the Luciferian to a spiritual association, a communion in which the adversary is found manifesting in some form within the spirit and body. Now, Michael talks about the deific mask. Um, it's a symbolized energy. And I guess you could go ahead and uh, associate that with... Um, you know, contacting a certain deity and taking on aspects of that deity to help you along the way. What do you think about that, Michael? I believe they refer to it as aspects of the demon. Mm -hmm. That's what they refer to it as. It's something that is left behind, like um, a gift, if you will. Mm -hmm. and when you do an invocation or an evocation of a spirit, depending on how um, ballsy you are, if you want to bring the spirit into yourself, that takes a lot of guts mm -hmm. because it's a matter of trust to bring that spirit into you and allow it free reign to speak through you. Mm -hmm. Now, in this aspect, when that spirit leaves, there's always something like, say, an extreme amount of rage or, um, say, for an example, a power increase, mm -hmm. you know, maybe an act of, an, an, uh, of um, cloak of darkness, if you will, mm -hmm. that is left behind. There's always something that they leave behind as a gift, a parting gift. Kind of like when you, when you come, when you call them, you give them offerings and sacrifices. Mm. Same thing. Mm. You give them an offering, they give you an offering. And I and guess it, go ahead. No, I was going to say that. I guess it's kind of like um, if you have a, a teacher, you know. Uh, that teacher's influence is rubbed off on, you know, the, the, the way they go about exactly the, the, their viewpoint. So it's kind of like that, but it said, these are you know deities that are leaving their influence and imprint on you yeah. as you work with them and go along in your spiritual path. I concur with that. That's exactly what it is. It would be like, uh, if you think of it from a psychology perspective, same exact thing, your parents rub off on you there their ways, their morals, you know, their codes, their creeds, you know, the way they do things. I can honestly say that's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is true. Um, yeah, I was recently reminded that, you know, 
a lot of today's youth always wonder how old I am because of certain terminologies that I use yeah. you know, certain terms like uh, instead of saying, Hey, you know, she's pregnant. It's like, she's with child, you know, <laughs> it's those older terms that today's generation just doesn't have. And it's like, how old are you? It's like, I'm not that old. <laughs> yeah. And on the same way, like some mentors I've had throughout my life, you know, some ways of my speaking, certain mannerisms I do, it, it comes from them. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, also uh, some of the spirits that I've worked with throughout the years, you know, mm -hmm. some of their influences rubbed off on me and, and some of some of the things that I say and the way I go about things. But uh, but yeah, that's that's part of uh, our spiritual path is progressing and uh, and developing. So let's go to um, page thirty nine. And it says, what is Luciferian Gnosis? And I just wanted to go over some of this. It says Luciferian Gnosis. It is essence without context. It ignores the impractical as it manifests chosen probability. It ascribes access to the acausal by merit of successful self-initiation. It is isolate, yet it synchronizes and orchestrates the causal under the dictatorship of will. It is freedom as it removes need for inner justification removes need for inner justification. You don't no longer have to try to convince yourself of what you're doing or yeah, exactly. the way you're going about things. You're just sure because you just it's know. That spiritual um, authority, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, if, if we look at it from, say, uh, Belial, you know, Belial, yeah. you know, what does he do? He gives you and grants you the titles of importance like senatorships and, and mm -hmm. things of authority matters this is exactly what that is mm. you don't need to justify your actions to somebody else or or your words to somebody else in this case you your practice is yours alone and mm. the way they departed on you is the fact that when you speak about your personalized ex, you know expectations or experiences along this path that is your authority because you have that authority over your experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, even if you take on apprentices and you're teaching them the, in the exact same, you know, mannerism, you know, it may be seen as a form of dictatorship. If you will, if you want to put it that way, yeah. the father becomes the son and the son becomes the father. Mm-hmm. All right, let's turn to page 41. Okay, so uh, point number seven, second paragraph, it says, people do not act just and good wholeheartedly. To believe right. such is to be naive. People appear to act good based on their environment. Look to any area or power or authority. Observe deeply and you will find corruption. Those who are noble in action and thought may be your friends, yet be careful in dealings. All betray if they feel too much pressure. As self-preservation is important to all, when this is tested, friends become bitter enemies. Know the nature of your friends and their possibility to betray. Be prepared, cautious, yet don't let this hurt your relations. You may focus on your friends openly and love those who are worthy. Don't be paranoid. Just be able to defend yourself. And that is very true. Um, very much true. <laughs> you know, it, it, it goes with the saying uh, about society. We are three meals away from anarchy. You know, it ties in just with, with what, what it's saying. What do you think, Michael? <laughs> I'm going to speak from an experience on this yeah. one. Okay. As you know, before this turnaround with uh, Duncan, with this different um, owner, right? I worked on for my former employer over a year ago, and there was this kid that thought that the manager was his friend. Okay. Okay. He would run and say whatever that somebody had told him, and went right to this manager. 
this manager looked at me and he said, just because I laugh with you, I talk with you does not make us friends. Mm -hmm. That kid was gone within three weeks. Very much true. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean when you actually look at it, management in this form, they train their team leads, their shift leads, their junior managers and such the same way they were trained. And a lot of times they will be nice to your face and stab you in the back when you're not there. Mm -hmm. It appears to be friendly, but it really is not. Yeah, and uh, just like um, just like Michael Ford was saying, you know, you know, once they they feel a need to betray, once they feel so much pressure, you know, yep. and it's like, you know, I, I don't know what people's uh, everyone has their own mentality, their own type of. Some people like to protect their ego, and they get yep. very defensive, you know, and lash out when that's attacked. Or sometimes, you know, it could be their family, it could be anything that you know we don't know their past you know what what could set them off but just exactly keep have eyes in the back of your had, head when you're with your friends i had this um team lead that um she basically kissed my backside every single day because i went above and beyond and i was good at what i did and she knew it yeah but here's the kicker she wanted an all-female team. I was oh, the only really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was the only male. Uh, so instead of coming out and saying, hey, do you mind going to a different shift? She chose to try to stab me in the back. Mm -hmm. That came back to bite her big time because I looked at the owner and the district manager and I said, is this the same woman in the same crew that basically kissed my backside day in and day out over the things I did. They came to me and say, Hey, go do what you do best. In yeah. fact, why don't you look at the camera or say at this date, this time, this is your team lead. And she doesn't realize that you're supposed to have a certain amount in the drawer to begin with. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it it just goes to show that to save yourself the trouble, you got to be tuned into the Luciferian gnosis. Exactly. You'll see it coming a mile away. <laughs> that is definitely truth right there. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's why when I said this, it was because of that very nature. I wanted to make that very clear because the district manager and the owner looked right at me and said, this is how we train them. To act like your friend. So there's <clears> no <throat> disruption during that shift. That chain. Yeah. But the fact that there was so much overwhelming, it proved that she was neglecting her work and it was coming down on her. Yeah. But you stay balanced and things will just fall into place. If you think of it from, say, Azazel, the scapegoat, she was trying to make me the scapegoat and it came back to Nipper big time. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Again, defend yourself. Mm hmm. Let's go to page 49. Now, at the bottom where it says number one, number two, on number two, it says, practice a path of arimanic yoga. Establish breathing control, relaxation, meditative achievement. This leads to the retention of astral energy, chi, or prana, and magical power. Mental control is everything in magic, the power of will, the ability to reason and determine your path. Um, and that is the key to magic, um, yeah. your, your mental state. I mean, another form of that would be remote viewing. Remove what? Remote viewing. Remote viewing, yeah. Because remote viewing within a state of meditation, you are basically reflecting over the day's events things that are have occurred that will allow you to discern mm. future choices or decisions mm. and how to deal yeah. with things. And that I just wanted to 
True. And I just wanted to comment on that because it ties in astral energy, chi, prana, magical power, same thing. It, it's just no, it's just called different things throughout different cultures. Exactly. And when you find balance within yourself, you're able to do things that most people can't. Yeah. So, I mean, I found that personally, I mean, when, when you deal with um, the yoga aspects, the breathing control, the relaxation and the meditation, uh, meditative achievements, some of the things that help are ends and mantras. Mm. They help you focus your chi, focus your energy and harness it. Not just to increase it, but to bring balance. And also certain breathing techniques. I mean, just, you know, mm -hmm. breathing for breathing in for four seconds, holding it four seconds, letting it out for four seconds. You know, that that practice alone will just yeah. calm you down in many situations. Oh, exactly. Yeah. That. Yeah. You'll, you'll feel it throughout your body and mm -hmm. your spirit. Um, let's jump to the following page, page 51, where it says the dragon. And if you go down to point number three, it says displaying power continually can begin to destroy it. It also makes your weaknesses clear to your enemies. Keep your enemies off guard by keeping power tightly wound to you. Don't respond to every challenge with great force. Think first before you act. This is a perfect way of controlling and coiling the dragon. And as the saying goes, um, the most powerful man is he who can control his anger. Would you agree? I do. I found that it is, at least in past experiences, something like this would classify as if you do need to speak on something mm -hmm. or to act on something. Remember the words that words are like daggers. A thousand cuts is worse than death. So yeah. if you do have to deal with an enemy or you have to deal with, say, slanderous words, which seems to be going around these days a lot from various different perspectives, mm -hmm. that um, you set such an example that it sends your enemies reeling. Let them sit there wondering, oh, if they know about this, what else do they know? Mm -hmm. It could be intimidating to them. Exactly. <laughs> and I definitely recommend that to anybody, just about everybody. Because you don't have to sit there and reply 20,000 times. One time is all it takes. And as, as they say, leave your enemy without the ability to fight back. Sons mm -hmm. of the art of war. Yeah, I agree. A very good book. Mm -hmm. um, I love that book. <laughs> I love that book. You know, I'm thinking maybe we, we can go over it. It's not an occult book, but mm -hmm. uh, there are some good aspects of it. It you know, may not be an occult I, book, but it does seem to apply to occultism because if you think about right-hand path versus left-hand path, there, you, there is a war going on from a spiritual aspect. And this is spiritual. It, you know, it, those, it, yeah, it could be applied to spiritual, uh, spiritual war as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good, uh, your not just physical things. because we deal with yeah. things in physical, but we also deal with astral spiritualism. Yeah. It's good to have multidimensional sight. when looking at everything, especially that book. Um, let's go over to page 113. And this is where it says arch demons or demon kings. It says vibrate and recite names based on attribution. After you feel you have called them in essence, focus on what you wish to gain from the sphere and announce it is my will. The name should be vibrated while focusing in the black mirror until a presence is felt. And at the very bottom where it says princes and tribes, it says Vibrate the names of the princes and tribes to empower servitors and spirits, which will carry forth your desires. Now, you do notice a big difference in contacting uh, spirits and saying ends when you vibrate. When you vibrate, you definitely feel a shift in the energy. 
and a shift in your in in the energy around you and in your energy throughout your body. Would you agree? I do, fully. I've used the the ends. I've used the mantras dealing with what any number of spirits, including arch demons and demon kings, such as Asmodeus, Belial, Piamon, mm. and a number of others. Yeah. And one thing I can say is that if you, when you do something like this, you do feel the atmosphere change in the room. Yeah. Especially if you're using a single candle with incense along with the black candle, mm. you know, the black scrying mirror. But if you're, you're using the name as a mantra, for an example, mm. Right. You're repeating it. Um, I believe um, EA Coetting actually did one that was actually very good. Um, Kelly Ma. Om Kelly Ma was the, was the uh, mantra. I did that for over an hour. And I can tell you that that is one of the ones that I actually use when I work with Kelly. Mm -hmm. But when you're using a demon such as Asmodeus... You want to to break it down and use that demon's name repeatedly mm. in the same manner. It helps you focus in on the energy, the current, and the essence of that that spirit, so you can sense and feel them coming. Yeah, and you could also do the same with different aspects of the demon name. You know, they'll they'll have their name, but then they'll have different names, which are which bring about yeah. different aspects of themselves. If Joseph you want Doherty and I were discussing this very thing uh, about a week or two ago. And um, when you do invocations, one of the things that uh, we were discussing is the command, mm -hmm. to command it, the spirit to come forth. Instead of saying, I petition thee to come forth, I command, I invoke, I summon, I conjure you command authority okay it it is something that really defines what a luciferarian is especially in this manner because if you if you go back to the adversarial doctrines and it says that uh lucifer represents something let me, let me just bring this up real fast yeah go ahead uh go ahead. number one all power, I, no, scratch that. It's the Luciferarian laws. All power comes from within. Bow to no other in spirit mm. or mm. flesh. Okay? But if you go back to the adversarial doctrines, it is, Lucifer symbolizes rebellion with a purpose mm -hmm. okay with a purpose knowledge of a spirit wisdom in the power right uh, if we're calling forth Astaroth for an example we know that a silver ring will protect us okay mm -hmm. so in this essence knowing that a mantra such as calling on the demon's name. Mm -hmm. This is something that brings you power. In a lot of folklore and a lot of myths, the name holds power over the, the being. Just want to make that clear. Yeah, you know, and, and they respond better because these spirits are straight up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're straight up with them, they'll, they'll be straight up with you. Um, and that's just the way, that probably the, way, the best way to, to go about things. Exactly. There's no beating around the bush, and that's 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 good. It doesn't it doesn't mean I also want to point out that it doesn't mean you disrespect the spirit. It just means you show enough respect to call them. Me, by the so name. I would say be firm but respectful. Exactly. Yeah, and that would be the the right way to go about it. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and turn to page one fifteen. And 
So right above the tree of death, it says these powers bring much strength and insight, but madness and spiritual harm to those uninitiated to the mysteries. So it just goes to show that if you don't take this seriously, mm -hmm. <laughs> they will harm you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get because you don't come in with the respect or, you know, reverence that is required. Also look at the geometric shapes that you see throughout the grimoire traditions, not just various different religions, philosophies. I mean, the circle of empowerment, the triangle of evocation. There's a reason why they tell you in the for example, the Red Book of Adam, mm -hmm. do not leave the circle of empowerment. Mm -hmm. Because then the spirit can get you. And, and there's always some time when you will be able to leave, which is normally around dawn. Yeah, I mean, um, it's not something to take lightly. Mm -hmm. So just uh, just a word of caution. Uh, Even in the Rod Skinner, it says the same thing. <laughs> I'm just going over something here uh let's go to page 214 <clears throat> so it says actually you know what um sorry about that i got mixed up uh let's go to page 157. Let's go to 157. Sorry. 157. Now, in on page 157, uh, third paragraph down, it says uh, the Yatuka petitioner would take a small part of their hair, of hair or nails, and burn it at the beginning of the ritual to corrupt the sacred flame and bless it to Adima. Okay. Now, me personally, I, you know, I wanted to get your take on it. Well, you consider a certain um, body hair, part. Nails. Yeah. Uh, hair, nails, uh, fluids, not just bones. These are, from a necromantic um, perspective, a lot of these empower the rituals and if you're doing a blood you know a pact of some sort you know you're working with a particular spirit mm -hmm. this is a great way to connect to them mm -hmm. but it also shows them yes i am serious about these rights and this is what i want this is where yeah. i want to go so it's again it's that trust it's also that bond if you will it's mm -hmm. not just uh the life bond but it is also connecting mm. again you're sharing essence with that spirit mm. okay so since we are running low on time let's go to page 217 and we will conclude with 217 and 218 all right okay so it says shadow tongue of arashk so says shadow tongue is a bar barbarous language of evocation now these are certain um certain things you can say which will bring about certain uh, uh actions here so take for instance uh on page 217's uh page 217 excuse me uh kofor uh koforizim i would say vibrate that it says by any by my familiars devour their this essence which attacks me Devour this essence which attacks me. Protection chat. It's a protection chat. So those of you who have this book, go to page two seventeen and two eighteen. There are things that you can chant, which will do certain things. Uh, second to the last, Akalasht, uh, Akatash send thy succubi to my victims' dreams. Drain them slowly of life. Give the poisoned uh, kiss of uh, Az used to haunt dreams. Um, the bottom one, Vizalazaka, uh, Vizaresh, uh, as the spirit departs, allow no comfort, devour them into our shadows. 
used to call upon Miseresh to drag enemies down and devour. And, you know, it goes on. But I just thought I wanted to point that out to the viewers that who have this book or do want to get this book. Uh, turn to those pages, and these are very useful. I concur. I definitely concur because if you have uh, spirits names, a lot of times it's the um, underlings, if you will, yeah. of that main arch demon or that um, demonic king. Every single spirit uh, that is mentioned as a ranked spirit has a priesthood, has knights, has, um, I believe it's uh, Beelzebub that is the only one mentioned that actually has a child. And there's also the trusted that reside in the house of these beings as well, mm -hmm. such as uh, maids and stuff like that, if you will. But mm -hmm. um, knowing the spirit and the right spirit will help you manifest what you're trying to do. If it aligns with that main arch demon and uh, those who he commit, he or she commands over. Mm -hmm. So I do concur with that fully. Okay. All right. Well, it's been a great chat. Uh, everybody, again, The Bible of the Adversary by Michael W. Ford. I encourage everyone to go out and buy it. A lot of good stuff in it. Uh, Michael Heisen, thanks once again for coming onto the channel. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. And everybody watching, like and subscribe to Dark Sorcery.